Hallelujah. He is enough. He honestly is enough. I was down there and I was just uh, thinking, anybody ever go to the church camp there near Hayworth? And uh, a thought ran through my mind this week. Remember, anybody ever go what they call the, the children's camp or the youth camp? It's where you got the little bitty kids. And all of a sudden, it, they have that altar call and this little kid, well, boy or girl, it don't matter. And they got their hands raised and they've got all their other all their other friends that already got the Holy Ghost. They're gathered around them and, and you just see the tears of sincerity just flowing down their face. I shared with a guy at work this week, I said, these are kids that are staying there when everybody else is going to get the really delicious cheese fries. I said, you got some really sincere hearts that are being filled with a really sincere God. Friend, I don't know when the last time you seen someone receive his spirit, but I'm telling you right now, that was just put in me deep this week how this young child can just kneel down there with the hands raised and just speak in a heavenly language. Speak in a language that's only God-given and not try to mimic somebody beside them. But boy, it is planting a seed deep, giving them a nature, planting a nature in them that is so unlike their own nature. When you don't see them go to the concession stand with their friends, and all they can do just keep talking talking to the one that has just become so real to them I don't know if it stirs you but it stirs me it really does it stirs me to know that the same God that wants to reach that young person wants to reach you again today in the very same way to let you know that guess what what is planted in you is so real and it has come to do a finished work. Say finished work. Finished. Woo, hallelujah. I'm so pleased that he knows how to do a finished work. Amen. But I had to share that with you. But if you'd stand with me, please, we're going to get with this. Hallelujah. God is so kind and so good. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to turn to Colossians 3 and 10. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Colossians 3 and 10. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Colossians 3 and 10 says this, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. The message title today is Backed Against the Wall. When you're backed against the wall. You may be seated. You say, Brother Thorne, you didn't pray that time. I've been praying all morning long. I really have. I've been praying that the same thing he has placed so heavy on my heart will somehow come through this brain and this heart, out this mouth, and all of a sudden you'd say, you know what? <laughs> Maybe there is more to this Jesus that I haven't experienced yet. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. But I was reminded twice this week of a nature change. Anybody in, anybody in here ever been uh, burned, okay, so to speak, and you got that remembrance of, man, that was hot, and man, I don't want to do that again. Amen? <laughs> and so sometimes we can actually feel like, see, I'm a nature guy. I like watching nature programs. And... Uh, Matter of fact, there was one time outside of Blue Mound, I walked out into the garage, and there was a cat. There was a mommy, mommy cat. But I didn't know that mommy cats could be what they call wild. Anybody in here ever experience a wild cat? I'm not talking domestic. I'm talking wild to where it don't want to be petted. It don't even want you anywhere around you, okay? It don't want to be anywhere near you. And so this week, I have, I have got into two conversations twice about when you're backed into the corner and you feel like you've got no other direction except out of that corner. 
and all of a sudden the same calm and docile person that went into the corner takes on a new face, <laughs> takes on a new nature, takes on that nature that says, you know what, I've just about had enough. Anybody in here ever have that place where God has allowed you to be driven into the corner to where he, he reveals to you that there's still a unrefined, unregenerated nature in us that has yet to die. Anybody hear me today? So I felt like I was talking with these two separate people about this and I'm thinking to myself, well, it's just natural to come out different. But that's where he caught me today. He caught me actually yesterday. Uh, Uncle Gary had left my house approximately around about five o'clock or something like that. And boy, it wasn't soon after Uncle Gary left that he just was starting to just lay some stuff on me. Isn't it weird how you can have a God that just kind of waits according to your program sometimes? He'll let you go to that one street or that one road, Brother Wilson, and all of a sudden, now it's time to talk, okay? Now it's time to converge and, and, and let you know that this is what I want to get across to you. And so I get to share with you today what he was wanting to get across to me. Hallelujah, but being backed against the wall. Oh, hallelujah. I'd like to read a little bit more out of Colossians. Hallelujah. I'd like to read, uh, let's, let's finish on 12 through 17. But put on, therefore, as the elect of God. Man, wouldn't you think that the elect is kind of like a chosen people? A people that, guess what? They may not have chose themselves, but he chose them. Holy and beloved bowels of mercy, full of mercy, okay? Kindness and humbleness of mind, meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And if any man have any quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. He's trying to give you some medicine. He's spoon-feeding you some medicine that lets you know it ain't going to taste good at all. Anybody ever remember those times when mom, it, it, she'd always fill the spoon. Man, couldn't give you a half a spoon. She had to fill the, and then if, if, if you just kind of act like you spit it up, you're going to get one more spoon right after that one. You will take the medicine, I assure you. And here he is, he's trying to kind of give us a little spoon that says it's not going to take taste real good, but it's definitely going to be good for you. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Almost kind of like if you want to be complete, you can't be complete without charity. You can't be complete without having that, that love that knows no bounds. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. But let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called into one body and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And the last one in 17, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And you'll say to yourself, what does that have to do with a corner, Brother Thornton, and me coming out of that corner looking better? It's got a whole lot to do with you in a corner. It's got a whole lot letting you know this. He wouldn't allow you to get in that corner except that he already gave you the medicine to accept what forced you into that corner. Most corners in our life are bringing us to a place of death. And you'll say, so I gotta die to live it sure worked in his case, didn't it? Hallelujah. But see, the impossible opens the miraculous. Can you say that with me? The impossible opens the miraculous. See, now then he takes and shows me the Israelites. They come out of Egypt, and they're backed up against the Red Sea. And you would think, they're, I realize it's not a corner, but they ain't got nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. And they are backed against 
the wall. Exodus 14 and 13, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today, not tomorrow, not next week. You get to live this one and experience this one today. For the Egyptians, hallelujah, for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Now forever is a long time. It is a long time. And the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Now he just gave them an impossible commandment. <laughs> ye shall hold your peace. You ain't gonna complain. You ain't gonna murmur. You're gonna stand there and behold what God is gonna show right in front of your very eyes. Ye shall hold your peace. So there's a miracle right there. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Now, come on, God. You've taken them to an impossible situation, and now you're given the commandment to go forward, and, and you haven't quite showed them the way to go forward yet. Has he ever taken you to that place? That he gave you a direct word and you're looking at the situation like, I hear what you're saying, but the road ain't even been paved yet to get there. You know, we could be looking at this church situation right here and saying, I don't see the going forward. But I assure you, he's got a forward in mind. Amen? Amen. He is never caught by surprise. So it takes its faith talk that says, and they go forward. That they go forward, that's faith talk. To hear it, and then they get to see it. Oh, hallelujah. But lift up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And what he's trying to say with that whole dry ground is, I've walked through the mud, and it's very laborious, Okay? You are laboring like you have never walked before in your life if you even get to keep your shoes on because the whole suction of the mud just wants to keep you in that one spot. And then you go to take that next step and the very weight of your circumstances sinks you down. And now you can't make that next step because of the weight of your circumstances just put you in the same situation the last step was in. Anybody hear what I'm saying today? So when he says, I'm gonna let you cross on some dry ground, that is some traveling ground. That is to where I can pick my feet up. <laughs> I can leave that which is behind. And I don't even have to feel what I'm carrying. I think I can move freely about the congregation. Oh, hallelujah. And you'll say to yourself, is dry ground that important? Oh, I, I believe it was in this place. Thou shalt go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I... Behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all the host and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen and the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel removed. See now, I'm telling you right now, I want to see a little bit more of the heavenly host than what I've experienced. I'm not praying to them, don't get me wrong, but I know that they're real. And I know this, he wouldn't talk about them, he wouldn't give examples about them, except that they're very, very real, and that they're very, 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 I know, I ain't got enough words, but I can tell you this. I want the impossible to open up the miraculous in my life. I am tired of seeing things and trying to work them out on my behalf and by my means, amen? Oh. And the angel of God which went before them in the camp of Israel moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and now it stood behind them. So now there's a whole change of position here. Say change of position. Well, change of position is very important, right? And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel and it was a cloud of, and darkness to them but it gave light by night to these. So the same situation, you got two groups of people, you got the Egyptians and you got the Israelites and the same circumstances had different results, didn't they? 
So I wonder, I wonder if brother so-and-so could be going through the same thing I'm going through, but he's getting a whole different result than what I'm getting. I think it is, it matters a whole lot from where you're standing, what you're seeing, and whom you're praising in what you're seeing. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And it said right here that Moses, he stretched forth, stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them onto their right hand and onto their left hand. So what I'm trying to say is these people were in an impossible situation, and now they're seeing things they've never seen before. They are seeing things that, hey, nobody's even talked to them about. Nobody's ever preached to them. Hey, later on in life, you're going to have a Red Sea. It's going to part. There's going to be a guy named Moses. He's going to show up on the scene. You're going to hate his guts for a while, but then he's going to take you out of Egypt, and all of a sudden, then you're going to hate his guts again because you won't even see what God's doing. Anybody here today ain't quite sure what God's doing in your life, so you want to hate everybody around you? and want to murmur about the situation God's got you in, even though he backed you into that corner to where you ain't got nowhere to go. And all he's asking is, is don't come out of the corner the same. All I want you to do is understand why I backed you. I backed you. You didn't back in there yourself. I used people in your life. I used circumstances in your life, and I backed you right into that corner. You'll say, is that the amen corner? It must be the amen corner because there's, there's something that he's trying to get out of us. There must be a song that he wants us to sing just a little bit differently. Like we've been someplace. Like all of a sudden, life has become real. Anybody got a song in them that he needs to change the lyrics a little bit until where you know this? It's no longer I, but it's Christ in me. And he ushered me to this place for a reason. I've been ushered and called to this place for a reason. Oh, hallelujah. So the Israelites, they were against the Red Sea there and they was backed against the wall. The next thing he shared with me was the widow in Luke 7 and 11 right here. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain and many of his disciples went with him and much people, much people. Now, when he was come nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and he said unto her, Weep not. Now, how in the world, Jesus, how can you out of the very lips that you got placed under your nose say, Weep not? This woman's lost something very close to her, She's in a lost position, okay? But I'm trying to explain to you here. He never looks at a lost position the way we look at a lost position. Man, she, she's backed up. She's a widow. She ain't got no husband to take care of her. Now her son has been taken from her because, she, she, hey, she's got some words in her mouth right now that says, you know, I don't understand why this all had to happen to me. I don't understand the circumstances and I understand right now I feel like I'm in a real straight with, with God right now. I don't understand. And then this guy has the audacity to show up and say, weep not. Weep not. Because he sees that impossible situation and knows this. She ain't never gonna look at that son the same again. This son is, is fixing to rise up. And I don't believe he rose up the same as when he went down. Amen? I don't have been talking to a lot of people that have passed away, but I can tell you this. It seemed like there was nothing that could touch Lazarus once he got up. They threatened his life, big deal. Yeah, you, you're going to have to touch a whole lot deeper than that to get me now. Anybody in here, are you touched too easily? It's surface stuff. It's stuff that just says... Why, why'd they have to touch me that way? Why, why did they have to say the things that they said? But see, a dead man, <laughs> a dead woman, when they raise up, they ain't touched as easily. They know that they've been someplace. And they, hey, 
So anyway, I know, you'll say, Brother Thornton, you just, you're trying to make too much out of this. He said, weep not. And he came and touched the bear. And they that bear him stood still, and he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. Arise. So you're telling me that all because he said, weep not to her, he was trying to stop her in her tracks and let her know there's an impossible situation that you, you have been a part of today. You didn't even want to make this walk today, woman. You didn't even want to be a part of this procession today. But you know what the Lord said? Oh, hallelujah. The procession might have started to the graveyard, but it didn't end there. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So you're saying in the midst of this street right here, they're going to have themselves a small revival. Yes, yes, and yes. Because one, sh one showed up and he knew what was in him. He knew that life exudes out of him. Okay? He don't even understand what darkness is all about. I know he does, but it, that ain't a part of him. The evil one come and, hey, there ain't nothing in him. Ain't nothing in him. Young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And then the Lord takes me to the next verse. And the next chapter was John 18 and 3. He says, I want you to notice Peter. Okay, so let's just read about Peter here. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, came thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. They came with business in mind, didn't they? And Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said to them, Whom seek ye? Now see, before he even got to this part where it says, Whom seek ye? He's, he's already had a prayer and great drops of sweat like blood is coming out because, man, he feels like he's backed into a corner. <laughs> he, he knows he's been ushered into this corner and he knows this is such a time. There's a time as such as this right here and this is mine hour. And just because I'm backed into this corner, I don't have to walk out bitter. I don't have to walk out unforgiving. But I can understand what the corner represents. I can understand that none of them that I brought with me could even pray with me a little bit. But I've got one. I have one that watches over me. I have one that keeps me when I don't even want to be kept. Oh, hallelujah. And so when he said, whom seek ye? The corner was far behind him. And he was now ready for whatever came his direction. And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. That's who we're looking for. Jesus saith unto him, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. And as soon as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and they fell to the ground. And then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. And if therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. See, he knows his end. He knows what they've came for. He knows what the corner was all about. And he knows he is stepping on into a new day. He is, he's actually been partaker of that new day, but this is the fulfillment of that new day. Friend, there, this is a fulfillment of something that has been prepared since the foundations of the world. And he knows the time is at hand. And this lamb is not running anywhere. This lamb is staying put. This lamb knows that except it dies, okay, no one else can have a chance hereafter. But he knew his part and he knew his place. And he knew that, hey, that whole deal in the garden right there of getting that unsubmissive fleshly nature to just break down and say, you know, nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, I know what my will is. It's screaming to the top of the lungs. But nevertheless, he comes out singing a song, nevertheless, nevertheless. And he says right here, he says, that they might, excuse me, in verse nine, that they saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gavest me, I have, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, he drew it. 
This is a person that's backed into a corner. When he's seen them coming with all the torches and with all the swords and all the lanterns, he didn't see the same thing that Jesus saw, did he? Because he feels like he's in that same corner. And matter of fact, he says he don't even understand that Christ is done out of that corner. He ain't even in the same place that Peter's at, spiritually speaking, because he thinks in his mind, I need to do something. And I need to just let this nature come alive. This nature, and matter of fact, this is how it was put to me was um, trying to get it to... Uh, there's an exact way that he, he spoke of that nature, the fallen nature. That's the term he used with me. I need to let this fallen nature be on display. And so what he does here, let's just see what he says. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, he drew it, and he smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear, and the servant's name was Malchus. And then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink of it? And Peter is just, he's befuddled, okay? What do you mean about a cup? What do you mean about all this? You don't understand. They don't come with real good business today. I know that they're coming to do some kind of harm. Just the way they came to me, I know they're going to do some kind of harm. And that's why I stood up with that fallen nature and said, we got to make a difference here. I'm going to assure you of one thing. I don't know how many times i got to back into this corner over here today. But if you come out of the corner with a fallen nature instead of the nature of Christ, you came out of the corner wrong. I'm going to say it one more time real, real, real slow. If you come out of the corner with any kind of nature other than the nature of Christ, you need to stay in that corner just a little bit longer. Turn your face to a wall if you've got to and get a hold of the one that placed you in that corner. And you'll say, well, God would never put me in that situation. Don't, don't ever say what well, God would not do because, see, God loves you so much he knows what it takes to make the soil fertile for the seed. And you'll say to yourself, fertile, fertile soil for a seed, not all the soil is the same. And he knows that if you can put some dead stuff in that soil, man, it can grow it can mature and it can sprout up so tall and so beautiful and be on display by the one that planted it. Mm-hmm. Oh, hallelujah. So he tells him, put up the sword and the sheath, which, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink of it? And the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and they bound him. Oh, hallelujah. And then the next thing that the, the Lord was sharing with me was, Hallelujah. In Mark 4 and 34. Let's go to Mark 4 and 34. Actually, 4 and 35. And Jesus, see, he's getting ready to speak to a storm. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitudes, they took him even as he was in the ship, and they and there were also with him other little ships and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full it's not a good situation they're in a place that they definitely don't want to be in and it's actually all Jesus' fault because he said let us pass over unto the other side and there's a few people in here that don't for they didn't forget how they got in this situation and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, saying unto him, Master, <laughs> I don't think this is how they said it. I don't think they just said, Carest not, thou not, that we perish. I got to believe when you're backed into the corner and everything's coming against you all at once, there is some stuff rising up in you that is saying to itself, if he wouldn't have said, let's go over to the other side. And now he's got the gall, he's back there sleeping. And now I'm gonna, go get, I'm gonna get ready to go wake him up. And I'm not gonna wake him up in a gingerly manner. I'm not gonna come like the servant that just loves him. I'm gonna come like the man that is involved in a mess that I can't get out of and he put me in it. 
carest thou not that we perish? And he arose because see, he ain't gonna be in the corner you're in. He ain't, hey, I'm telling you right now, he, he'll talk to you, he'll encourage you, he'll let you know that the corner's got its purpose, but he ain't gonna stay in that corner with all the bad business that you want to drum up. He's gonna let you know everything's got a purpose. And he arose and he rebuked the wind and he saith unto the sea, peace be still. Man, he, call, he calls things differently than what we call them. He looks at situations, tells that woman, hey, weepest thou not? Don't weep no more. What do you mean, don't weep no more? My son is dead. Don't you even see anything, God, that I'm going through right now? Don't you understand my situation is as real as real gets? Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly. Now I wonder, I'm just wondering, what if the backing up into the impossible situation, look at your name and say impossible situation. I wonder if backing them into that impossible situation is so they can have a testimony on the other side that they never would have had before. I wonder if they could have a testimony that says, I was in a boat. And this guy got up, and I'm talking about it was one of those bad storms, the kind that makes all the fishermen, they're just worried that it's going to be the last boat trip out. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? I thought I even understood where this guy was from, that his mom's Mary, you know, his dad was Joseph. I thought I understood a little bit about his background, but today he showed me something that made me believe a little bit more that I really don't know who this man is, and I really don't know what he's capable of doing. Anybody in here put limits on Jesus and what he can accomplish in your life? Anybody in here has said, I've prayed before, but he just didn't answer I assure you, he heard the prayers, but sometimes there's development going on in the seed. That way, once you, once you get fully developed, you can appreciate the miracle and the miraculous so much more. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you care us not that we perish. He cares, friend. He cares, friend. Jeremiah 33 Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof. You know, I, I love the way God speaks to him. He lets him know, but I'm the maker thereof. In case you want to know just where the beginning of it all came from, where you're just, just being a little bitty, little bitty, little bitty something, a speck of something, the maker thereof. And the Lord that formed it to establish it, and the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And this is what he was tying into that whole corner situation. Because see, that whole corner situation that we're backed into is so you can know, just like Jeremiah was told right there, that there is, there's a greater that you haven't experienced yet. There is a side of me that you don't even know exists just yet. Friend, I'm letting you know, he will blow your little mind all to pieces. I had one little revelation back there today that I am just swimming in still, okay? How there's no inheritance in the first covenant. I'm swimming in that, swimming in that right now. Because what it does then, it begins to make you see farther than you've ever seen before and see things a lot more clearer. And then maybe you can actually mention it to somebody that's stuck in an old covenant and not understanding what there is in, to embrace in a new covenant. How there's so much more, so much more to, to be a part of, to embrace, and to understand that this God of the old covenant that died for you and I, 
that took and shed his precious blood for you and I has made a way where there seemed to be no way. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. And in uh, John here, John 5, I want to make sure that I'm on the right page here. Nope, it ain't John 5 yet. I'm going to swap pages here. Job. Man, I was trying to avoid Job. I was hoping I'd get to the end of the message before I got to Job. Job 2 and 1. See, when you're backed into that corner, that old skin for skin comes alive. And you'll say, well, is that what Peter was experiencing when he took that sword and cut off Malachus's ear? You tell me what Peter was experiencing. Peter knew that this, they're, they're coming and they ain't, they ain't coming for a good reason. He understands that the pressure is being applied. I know there's somebody in here under the sound of my voice that you have experienced some serious pressure. And he's trying to let you know that that pressure don't have to be. Amen? Let's go talk about Job for a second here. Job 2 and 1, and again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Now, hey, you want to talk about just really, that's what six, hast thou considered my servant Job. That is six words right there. It might have been a little bit more in the Hebrew Chaldees there. <laughs> I don't know, but it's six words right there that means a whole lot. That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. He's been put into the corner multiple times. He has been placed in that corner multiple times. And he has always had my heart when he comes out. Every time he's come out of that corner, every circumstance that came into his life, he's upright, escheweth evil, and now he's getting ready to find a corner he ain't never been in for in his life. Hast thou considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth, perfect and upright man, one that feareth God, escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause, and Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. See, this is when you know what's, what nature you got is because if you still got the testimony on your lips and you're backed into that corner and the only thing you can say in that corner is skin for skin. Now, I know what they did, <laughs> but I'm going to get them back. I know what they want me to do. I know the word of God says that I'm supposed to forgive them and just let it go. But somehow their nature in me just keeps hollering louder and louder, skin for skin. Skin for skin. And you'll say to yourself, Brother Thornton, could we be that ignorant to want to say the wrong things to the right one? Friend, I have told him many a times that I love and forgive so-and-so, 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 so-and-so. But it seems like he knows the depths of my heart. And he knows that there's lip service <laughs> and there's heart service. And he knows that, guess what, Brother Thornton? Before I set you on the shelf as that vessel of clay, we're going to work out every air bubble that's in you. And you'll say to yourself, how many times does his hard squeezing hands have to squeeze on my clay? Because see, he knows. He knows how many corners that he's placed you in and everything. See, the language, it tells it all. The language tells it all. That's why there is a language that he gives us that heals us while you're yet in the corner. And you'll say to yourself, so there could be a language I can speak that is a faith language, 
a language that can just take me even though I'm in the midst of the worst storm of my life and all of a sudden everything's okay because I know I'm not alone. I know he's with me. I know he will not forsake me. Oh, hallelujah. And he put forth now, it says right here in five, it says, but put forth now thy hand now and touch his bone in his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. There's limitations. He just, I think what he does is he reminds Satan that you are much limited. Very limited. Except I give you a little bit more leash, you don't even have room to roam. So went forth Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and he smote Job with the sore boils and from the sole to the, of the foot unto the crown of the head. And he took him a pot sheared to scrape himself withal. And he sat down among the ashes and then here comes that help me. She is there to help this man. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity and curse God and die? So when you're in the corner and you can't even get no words out yourself, the enemy will be sure to send somebody to speak to you. And them people that are coming to send, hey, you'll know by the sound of the voice. You'll know whether this is a, this is a unregenerated voice or the heart of God. And you'll say, can it sound that different? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's a voice that was set on a cross for you and I. That doesn't even sound like the voice that says skin for skin, does it? It don't even resonate the same. You know those crystal glasses that you lick your finger and you rub on the rim of it and it just has that amazing sound, that frequency? Well, there's a frequency with God a forgiveness frequency. And the forgiveness frequency has a ring all its own. And it knows when it's real and when it's fake. And you'll say to yourself, close your eyes with me please right now. Just, just take your index finger of one hand or the other and say, Lord, the, the, the frequency that I've been generating on the top of this here forgiveness cup, oh, boy, shall that I be kid. The frequency that I have been generating on this forgiveness cup. Is it the right frequency? Is it really from your heart instead of my heart? You'll say to yourself, Brother Thornton, what are you even talking about the frequency of a cup? I'm letting you know this. When Jesus talked like there was a cup that he had to drink from, hey, there was a whole lot in that cup. And it wasn't just a liquid. There was a whole lot spiritually involved with that cup. Hallelujah. And now you got this woman that shows up in this guy's worst day. And then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. Because see, you know what he can hear? He knows the right voice to listen to in a corner. And you'll say, well, Brother Thorne, don't you, didn't you read on farther to where he had his doubts and didn't he want to be born? I did read those places. But I understand this. <laughs> Through it all, he heard a mess. He heard a lot in this corner over here. He heard his own flesh telling him, I wish I'd have never been born. He heard all of his friends saying, you must have did something wrong to deserve this. And in the whole time, God has allowed this corner to take place that he would know who he serves. That he would really get a, not only a glimpse, but an understanding that says, I'm, I'm tasting something. I'm tasting something and seeing something brand new for the first time. Oh, taste and see what God has got for you in the corner. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. But that nature change. Hallelujah. I am hurrying, folks. 
assurance that his will, that this is his will for me. You'll say, Brother Thornton, you don't know the corner that I'm in right now. And you don't know the corners that I've been in in my life. I don't, but I know this. There is an assurance. And that's the key word he, he used in that whole phrase. The assurance of knowing whom's I am. Whom's, whom's put his name on me. And you'll say to yourself, Brother Thornton, how can you read all that into that one word assurance? Because I know in whom I serve. I know that he doesn't have accidents and I know the cup that he gave me to drink out of, it's got a frequency. And that frequency is all about his forgiveness and my forgiveness for all those people. And you'll say to yourself, you sure it's just about forgiveness? I can tell you one thing that'll keep you out of his presence quicker than anything. And that's when you've refused to forgive the ones he's given you the forgiveness for. And you'll say to yourself, well, I don't feel like he gave me the forgiveness yet. Well, I tell you what, you take them up on it today. You, you take them up on it today and say, Lord, in case I missed it and I wasn't home when the Amway order showed up to my door of your forgiveness, could you bring it my way again? Could you give me the fresh forgiveness to really, really forgive this person or that person or all the many persons? Amen? He doesn't waste anything. Go gather all the fragments. Gather every fragment that it wouldn't be lost. Gather up all the basket full of fragments. And if he is so concerned about some bread and some fishes, some loaves and some fishes, how much more so would it be the, the forgiveness seed that he planted in you and I that says, you know what, all this can be taken care of today. All of this can be taken care of today in but a moment. Oh, hallelujah. In uh, Philippians 4 and 1, there is a peace that passeth all understanding. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, long for my joy and my crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eudeus, I'm going to mess that up, and I'll just let you read it behind me. And they that be of the same mind in the Lord, and I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with the other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. And that's the key right there. He had me underline thanksgiving. That is a language that is supposed to be spoken in the corner. <laughs> that is the language that while you're yet in the pressure, in the cooker pot, that you just start to thank him for everything he's brought your direction. Knowing this, that it's for the furtherance of his gospel and his life and his glory. Amen? Amen. You'll say, can that get me out of the corner faster? I assure you this, it won't keep you in there any longer. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good of report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And you'll say to yourself, that looks like a scripture that I can take to the corner with me. That looks like the scripture that can keep me while I'm yet in the corner. Philippians 4 and 8, if, if I've been needing the one verse that God said, this is what I'm sending you today. This is what I'm sending you today while you're yet in the corner. This is the thing that just, you just keep re-saying it. You just keep re-believing it until it becomes a part of you and all of a sudden the skin for skin is no longer with you, but it's the hope of his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm very close to, hallelujah, I'm very close to being done. I'm trying to look and see if there's a clock. Hallelujah. Dogs eating of the crumbs in Matthew 15 and 21. 
I had never seen this before, but I'm going to share it with you. We're going to, we're going to, I'm not skipping nothing. We're just going to say it because it needs to be said. And Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil, but he answered her not a word. Now, I don't know if you've ever had those times to where you think, you think the heavens have been shut up, but they really haven't. But boy, it seems to be all quiet. Amen? He answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, okay? For she crieth after us. See, there, there's no compassion there with the disciples. They, they, they're watching his moves, and they're watching everything, and since he doesn't speak to her, then they just kind of put her in the category of, you're wasting his time and ours, okay? For she crieth after us, and he answered and said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then she and came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he, but he answered her and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. See, this is the amazing thing is, she's in the worst time of her life right now. She's interceding on somebody else's behalf. Amen? This ain't even her corner. <laughs> but she's so involved in this corner that she knows the pain and the suffering of who's in the corner. And so that all those people that say, well, thank God I'm not in a corner, you know somebody who is. Oh, hallelujah. And she says, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And right when I read that, I went from looking at that table as just having enough for that which he had prepared it for, but he never has just enough. And this is what the Lord shared with me was, that she's seen him as one. Matter of fact, I want to I turn it over here so I can get it correct here. Hallelujah. It says right here that she doesn't buy the limits of his abundance for feeding all that come to his table. I'm going to say that one more time. She don't buy the limits. She ain't buying it. Of his abundance for feeding all that come to his table. She understands that there's more than enough on that table. And it ain't just because he only has a sufficient amount for those that are supposed to be at the table. Friend, when he prepares a table, when he prepares your heart and my heart, you don't know who's going to come into your heart later on in life, do you? And you'll say to yourself, well, is that good or bad? It can be both. <laughs> he prepared you with abundance, abundant mercies and abundant grace, abundant love. You'll say, you're, you're, he spread all that in my heart. Friend, he is never, ever, ever, ever going to be accused that he didn't give you enough. He gave you enough. And then Jesus answered her and said, oh woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt, and her daughter was made whole from that hour. So since she took the time to care about someone stuck in the corner, someone that was directly connected to her, and God knew there would be that connection. I know that I'm going to have a mom interceding for a daughter. Any moms in here ever intercede for the daughter? Oh, hallelujah. And I am closing with this. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the last part that he gave me was him sitting on a donkey. Actually, two of them. And so in Zechariah 9 and 9, this was the prophecy before it was fulfilled. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh up unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. In Matthew 21 and 1, and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then he sent Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied, and the colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. 
And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, the Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. Now I want you to imagine, you're going to go take somebody else's property, because <laughs> that's what they was at that time, their property. You better know and you better, better for sure heard from God. Amen? And this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and the colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded, and they brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And the very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that went before them that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. See, now donkeys have a reputation for what they call stubbornness, okay? But this is due to their highly developed sense of self-preservation. Due to their highly developed sense of self-preservation. Peter, put up the sword. Peter, I realize you've got a highly developed sense of preservation. <laughs> but this is my corner. And I got in this corner with a purpose. And I am leaving this corner with a direct, direct vision. He got on that donkey and got on that foal. And he's saying a whole lot more than what he was saying out loud. He's letting them know that there is a stubbornness <laughs> that can only be tamed by God. Only by God. Stand with me, please. Self-preservation will keep you in the corner longer than you need to be there. See, it's, it's, it's difficult to force or frighten a donkey into doing something it sees as contrary to its own best interest or its safety and I'm not calling anybody in here a donkey but I am saying this there is a nature and that except that donkey's nature gets overridden Christ don't get to sit on top of that donkey and that donkey don't get to spread its little feetses over all these tree branches and all these palm leaves and you'll say to yourself well, doesn't a donkey normally walk on that kind of stuff? I bet it wasn't. I bet this was a brand new walk for these donkeys. It was all because the one that sat and rode thereon. And aren't you glad he just doesn't sit and ride thereon? But he abides. Point at your own chest right here and say, he abides in me. And Lord, I thank you for the corner and all the corners that you've had in my life. Bow your heads as we pray and we're going to close. Father, I thank you for every corner that has been in my life and in their life. And I want you to change the language. Just like you changed the language of those kids at church camp, dear Lord, and you allowed something to come out heavenly instead of earthly, dear God, I'm asking you, please, change the language while we're yet in the corner and allow us to know this, dear God. You abide in us. You rest upon me, dear God. And there is nothing that I could do, dear Lord. There is nothing I could do to get out that corner any quicker except to trust you. I want to trust you. Lord, thank you and praise you for all the people today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And I believe we are going to be having a meeting directly after, correct? Okay, so don't leave anywhere just yet. You need to hear the meeting. Apologize if I went too long, but... Uh, Pray for me.